This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner. Hello. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today's journey is unlike anything any of us has ever seen. We are today visiting with the mayor of the beautiful city, the county, the Garden Island, which, as God created, was one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And last week, they had 36 continuous hours of rain. Can you imagine? So the mayor has taken time out of his very busy schedule, boots, mud, and all, to be with us on the telephone. So thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Bernard Cavallo. Thank you for taking the time uh, to be with us. Aloha. Aloha, Marcia, and thank you for the opportunity to share uh, what's happening here on Kauai with, with all of you and, of course, the listening audience, so mahalo. Okay, where do we begin? <laughs> like, how do so, we... <laughs> you know, I just want to, if I, if I may, you know, we obviously navigating uh, to a journey, right? That's the big <laughs> part right there for us. We're navigating here. <laughs> uh, you know, oh. unfortunately, we've experienced uh, terrible uh, disaster situations. We've gone through our share of it from Hurricane uh, Eva in 1982 and then, of course, Iniki in 1992. And then now with this particular different kind of disaster, but it's been devastating uh, to our island, to our people. But we have an awesome team in place. We're here at the Emergency Operating Center since Saturday when this whole thing began. And so we've been um, placing all of our people, of course, in the right roles and try to give you folks an update. We have an uh, incident command station here in, a, in our EOC and an incident action plan. So I wanted to share a little bit about what are the top priorities right here for us as of today and some of the updates on where we're at as we continue to navigate in addressing some of the disaster areas on our island. And unfortunately, one part of our island is totally isolated as we speak. So that's a big concern for me and for all of us. But our priorities right now in these, what, six areas, damage assessment of our public and private property. We're trying to do everything we can. We've deployed our teams here from our EOC to do boots on the ground and do a thorough assessment of the damages that are happening uh, right now as we speak so we can continue to get all our information together and of, of course help us to seek assistance here on Kauai. The second area is to provide adequate relief of outgoing personnel and adequate supplies to current shifts. So we have a turnover of personnel in this EOC as well as out in the field. So we gotta make sure everybody's fresh and ready to move and do the work that needs to be done, boots on the ground, as I stated earlier. We're doing a complete restoration of power and water to affected areas. Um, some of our uh, areas of Hanale and Hyena uh, were kind of intermittent, totally out of water and electricity, but as of today, uh, it's, it's back. We're still waiting to get in the testing on our drinking water. So we're telling our people out on the Hyena end that they need to not drink the water, but they can use the water for other purposes around the home or whatever they need to do. But um, be assured that um, every effort has been made and is still being made to provide water and supplies and food and all of that to that part of our island. We're also completing the restoration, um, I'm sorry, continued debris clearance. That's a big, big part now. So the debris and trash that is being accumulated since it's happened. And so we're working on a plan on where to place the debris and that's a big part for us as well. And of course, um, there's isolated areas, like I mentioned, that the community is seeking assistance. We have an evacuation plan in place. Um, to assure that our people are able to get out of that area safely. And then finally, um, of course, to maintain the ability to protect our people. And thank goodness, so thank God that there was no actual injuries to date, but devastating um, 
results on homes, property, land, of course, and park facilities, et cetera. So that kind of gives you a brief um, outline on our priorities as of today. But here at the Emergency um, Management System uh, Agency, we're fully activated, of course. A flash flood watch is in effect right now starting um, today, uh, tomorrow, Thursday, on through Friday. Again? So that's another, again? Yeah, again. Oh. Yeah, that, this is as of 6.30 this morning. So we're kind of have oh. that on the side, knowing what we have to get done today. Um, the U.S. Army and National Guard and the County of Kauai, we have airlifted 340 people from the Haena and the Wainia, Wainiha area since Monday. So as we speak, Marsha, from Wainiha to ha Haena is totally isolated. The people who live there cannot uh, use, utilize any vehicular access. So the, the bridge is gone? The yeah. yeah, no, the devastating landslide. Oh. There's eight plus landslides that are kind of all along the roadway, the hillside just coming down onto the roadway. So our, our pub public works and our state crews have been out and about trying to clear the roadway. However, the more you clear, the more it comes down, you know, so the integrity of the land area is very um, unstable right now. So there's safety issues also involved. So in this particular area, they're still assessing the situation. Unfortunately, you know, we're talking about three to four weeks before we can actually open up one lane so people can come out of that area of our island. So in the meantime, we're doing everything we can through the National Guard, through the Coast Guard, through hearts and souls of the community who step up to look at how they can add their part, whether it be bringing additional food, water, supplies, medical supplies. We've identified um, two locations on this particular area, Camp Naui, which is a very popular site there on the North Shore, and of course, one of the hotels, Hanalei Colony, is another one that is um, also serving as a distribution site. We've deployed several helicopters that go in daily uh, as our, our evacuation effort to get people out. Like I said, we've evacuated over 300 people from that area already. Um, so the landing zone has been identified in that area. We're asking people who call in to get, do their best to get to that landing area. And of course, the helicopter will take them out to a high, higher ground. Well, now, um, where, where do you take these people once you get them out the where do they go up to Princeville. we have a Princeville airport in Hanalei it's kind of located way up uh, up higher ground of course and once we can get them to that little airport area then the people family we provide transportation whether it be via our county bus transportation to get them either to the airport we do have visitors of course in this part of our island and if you're a resident a lot of them are hooking up or teaming up with their family member or friends for now but since Saturday, uh, some have chosen to remain uh, in this area, and others, of course, have made the decision to evacuate. So we're trying to encourage everybody to, if they can, to evacuate the area uh, and get to a safer place for now until we can do a better assessment of the entire area. Um, so we've been working closely on that. There are multi-agency relief efforts from our visitors and, and, and our, our uh, National Guard, like I said, the American Red Cross, we have a solid team here at the EOC trying their very best to uh, address the entire situation. Now, uh, our last conversation with you, you told us about the fact that you had all of this in place, ready just in case, because you had learned so much from the last two um, okay. hurricanes. You know, right. But unlike the hurricane, we, we have, it's almost a little different, well, majorly different kind of disaster. So yes, we have a checklist in place, if you will. We know what we need to do. We've gone through something like this. We assembled the team. We've done numerous mock type of uh, trainings prior to this with our KEMA team, which is a Kauai emergency management team that has been doing. So, you know, now it's a real situation. And I'm so happy with the support from the federal, state, and county levels of people wanting to help support. We've got people in here from Maui, from Oahu, different members helping alleviate or, or, or transition some of our team members to stay here 24 hours sometime 
overnight, you know, for the next day as we transition in the mornings at 6 o'clock. And so we're asking for support from our neighboring islands as well, from our political um, uh, leaders to help support what we can in relief efforts or funding. So there's a lot of stuff happening, but the main part right now is to address an isolated area, boots on the ground, do an assessment of all the damages in other areas, and then come up with a checklist so we can submit that for relief efforts and support. Well, now, um, I heard on one of the many newscasts that, in fact, I think is constant coverage of Kauai, the one young man said there were rivers in place that had not, that the whole landscape was different. Can you tell us about that? What, what is different? Did Mother Nature just go back to what it was originally before people started developing? Tell us what. You know, I, 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 that is true. Um, I, I had the chance to get up in a helicopter just the other day, back right after, I wanted to have an aerial view of what was really happening, which is why I mentioned the landslides along this critical area of the Haena Wainiha area. And at the same time, the, the large amount of flooding in all areas of the island, and like you said, rivers, not streams, rivers that were created um, that wasn't there before, that went right through different properties. It went right through some of our park facilities. It went right through some of our <laughs> eroding many of our restroom facilities in the parks and pavilions, you know, because that's the where the water came gushing down, and so we're trying to address all of that as, as we speak. How homes are, you know, torn off their foundations. Uh, but again, it's all the homes and structure and land area. But thank God, till today, no life or injuries were reported. Well, we're going to take a break for one minute, and we'll be right back to complete our visit with the mayor of Kauai, who has taken his time to be with us. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you could talk to that dog banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Stay in the hall of fame. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investings, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you Tuesday. Aloha, I'm Marcia, and we are back. We are visiting with the mayor of the beautiful island of Kauai. And Mother Nature was not kind. I don't know what we did. Now, you're a Hawaiian, and you're tied to the Aina. What did yeah. we do? What did we do to upset Mother Nature? <laughs> well, I'm going to say that, you know, unfortunately, um, with, the, with the disaster that took place, I mean, I think, you know, we got to continue to work together culturally to honor our land, honor our water, respect the aina, respect the culture, and all of that is so much, um, sometimes we forget, yeah? Yeah. Especially as leaders, we all need to continue to look at that because, you know, I believe some of that ties into what happened. I would say that. But at the same time, it's how we continue to be a resilient island and resilient community to bounce back and, and really wake up and say maybe we got to look at different things and work differently and be more pono and look at our hearts and souls and stay connected spiritually, I believe, so that we can continue to take care of each other, more importantly, the land. And so now with this thing, this what, what has happened recently, we're all pulling together, like I said, we have a great team in place here. We have an abundance of, of support from just community, hula halals, businesses, individuals wanting to give water and food and supplies. 
that alone is a big task at hand to coordinate and operate that and place it somewhere that is accessible to people. So we're working through that. I'm happy with the volunteers from our Red Cross, from our food bank, and all the different people. And donations are being, like I said, coming in all areas. And I wanted to uh, explain or announce some of the areas where donations can be accepted or are being accepted. The Food Bank of Hawaii, the Kauai branch here on Kauai is accepting whatever um, food items, uh, so we're asking them to please come by. A Kauai Independent Food Bank is also available. Kilauea Neighborhood Center, which is on a higher area on the North Shore, is receiving all the different supplies and, and gifts from the people all in this one area at Kilauea Neighborhood Center. Over on the south side, Koloa Neighborhood Center, uh, in addition, Marsha, not only the North Shore, but other parts of our island were affected, like in the Kapa area, Kiapana, totally flooded, homes. But they're not isolated, but they were affected by this storm. Same like in Koloa. We also accept non-perishables, bottled water, cleaning supplies, hygiene items that are being requested first. So all of that is being assembled at these locations so we can get it to the people in need but very thankful for all the people um, who have put their hearts and souls into giving and providing support. So I wanted to mention that as well. Well, tell me now, uh, you know, our modern day world operates on fuel. So what about yeah. getting fuel yeah. to those places? You know, it takes those big trucks to, to move all that gasoline and things. How do you get fuel out there? Okay. So last night, uh, in fact, late, late afternoon, we made a call to the Robinson family, uh, Nihau. I wanted to make sure Nihau was doing well, you know, okay, and they're, they're doing okay. But through that conversation led to an opportunity to actually deploy a barge that is used to take equipment and supplies from Kauai to Nihau back and forth. So we were able to deploy the barge this morning at 5 o'clock. And on that barge, uh, we were able to transport a, a tractor, a dump trucks, uh, a payloader, um, and some of the equipment that is needed to help clear the area uh, in the hyena. We also were able to put on uh, extra supplies onto the barge. And we have to work with our military, uh, our base people, uh, Captain Vinnie uh, Johnson and the team at PMRF. And 5 o'clock this morning, we were able to deploy that uh, barge, and it was going to go over and land over in Hyena to get supplies out there. And on the barge include drums of uh, gas uh, fuel mm -hmm. as well. And so we were able to transport fuel also on this barge, and we're going to continue to do that uh, via the barge. And uh, we have water wagons too uh, to help support uh, as well. So we're working closely with, with all the team members. Well, now, of course, I didn't think about Nihi Hao, but how did they do in the storm? You know, we, yeah, so we kind of forget them. Yeah. No, no, unfortunately. No, I said we do, yeah. No major damage, mm -hmm. uh, but very um, willing to help. And so very happy with that and happy that Nihi Hao is okay but they're willing to help, and this is part of their, their manao and their love. Oh, wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. We, uh, now, that's part of your county, is it, Nihau? Yeah, the county of Kauai and Nihau. And Nihau. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Great. So now, what, you're getting ready for a flood tomorrow? What do, what do we, how do you get ready? What are you prepared for when everything is shambles? Yeah. So now the prepared part, like I said, we've assembled our first responder teams, our assessment teams, our out boots on the boots on the <clears throat> on the ground type of thinking. That's a big, big part. The assessment teams have been deployed. We're already managing. I believe we have the food and supplies. We have two locations that our people isolated from us can go to. We have an evacuation plan in place. Helicopters coming in. We have a barge going over to provide that part of our island. Other parts of the island, the assessments will take place so we can get relief to the people who have experienced tragedy to their property and homes, and at the same time working closely with all the partners right here, federal, state, county. I've been in communication with our representatives from congressional team, our Senate team, our local Senate, just to stand by 
because I wanted this umbrella of faith around us. When we need help, we can reach out and ask, and they've been very willing to do what they can uh, as we continue to good good data, good information that can help us uh, bring in resources to, to get through this terrible time that we're experiencing okay. here on Kauai. And so now you have a problem of whatever it is from the mayor, from the governor. And then yes, a, what does that mean? So the governor's proclamation uh, offers us support that we can actually go out and get resources instead of going through the normal process, uh, which takes longer because of the emergency part of it. And then I did one as mayor for our island, too, that our, our, our public works team, our parks team, our management team can go out and bring in resources, contractors, uh, whatever we need to do to get the job done. And then resources will come, and then you can get reimbursed accordingly. That opens that door. And we're working closely with our congressional team now to get a presidential proclamation, which will help us to get more funding and resources that way as we continue to assess uh, the entire island. So all of this, uh, the emergency support, comes via these proclamations from our governmental leaders. So the mayor did it, I did it, our governor, and now we're looking for the presidential it does, declaration is to that, help us totally get the big picture. Is that with FEMA? Is that what the yes. federal FEMA. And, and, and the FEMA, military? Yes, the FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Association, they're also uh, deploying certain FEMA people coming in from D.C. into our EOC here to help us and side by side to help us and shepherd us to the right process in doing assessments. And then once we get that documentation, done, they take that back and we can get uh, support that way. Do, now, does, does that mean for, for you as a, as a government entity, but what about individuals whose homes are gone, everything is like and there's and nothing to come back to. What, what we happened? We have our teams in place that are doing assessments of all properties. So once we get uh, whatever the address is, we'll do the assessment, document it, that that particular home will receive whatever support uh, to help them rebuild. Because we saw, so that's just one step yeah. we saw some places that looked like Mother Nature just redesigned the island and there's nothing to come back to. Yeah, and those are the places that are, like I said, our assessment teams will be doing a thorough overview and then uh, accordingly uh, providing support back to the people that lost their property due to the storm. And that's an important part. So that's the assessment team I was talking about. Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, as always, it's a pleasure to talk to you and Thank for you, you to so take your time you. out to, to be with us. Uh, hopefully... I know we're going to ask you to come back, but hopefully it won't be like this. Hopefully. Hopefully. No, uh, more good news the next <laughs> yes. time. But I want to make sure, Marsha, that if anybody has any questions or want to provide any additional support, whoever is listening out there, or you have any um, follow-up Want to give, us a, give us a telephone number or an I'm email? Right here at the Emergency Operating Center right here in Lihue, 241-1800. 241-1800. One eight zero zero, and from that point, we have our team here receiving the calls and helping people to get the information they need or whatever help that is provided. We can we can take and document. So thank you for that. Well, thank you for taking okay. again taking time out to be with us, and ahui ho, ahui ho, and aloha. Aloha.